Howdy folks, I do hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where today, I delete account 101, is going to be playing HMS Fiji. Crown Colony class cruiser, and quite simply, the best tier 7 cruiser in World of Warships. In fact, no, wait, I'm not done. It's not just the best tier 7 cruiser in World of Warships, it's just the best tier 7, full stop, end of story. You're entitled to disagree, of course, but you're wrong. Let's face it, though, it's not difficult to be the best Tier 7 cruiser in World of Warships, is it? I challenge you to name a single Tier 7 cruiser in this game that is not HMS Fiji that you would describe as great. I mean, there are plenty of OK Tier 7 cruisers. The Boise's alright. The Miyoko's not bad. The Flint and the Atlanta used to be epic, but now they're just memes. The German York is probably best described as okay. And don't talk to me about the Algerie. When was the last time you saw anybody playing an Algerie? Who wasn't grinding their way to the equally mediocre Charles Martel? So it's not difficult to lay claim to being the best tier 7 cruiser in the game. But the best tier 7 in the game? Yeah. Tier 7's a difficult tier. I mean, Tier 7 battleships and destroyers, none of them are remarkable. And some of them absolutely stink. Yes, Mayhem, I'm looking at you. The Geniser now is absolutely awful, which is probably why so many people just treat it as a really big destroyer, because trying to get any kind of consistency out of the guns is next to impossible. The Leon is fun, but nobody takes it seriously. The Colorado is, well, it's just the Colorado. The King George V is the battleship that brought 14-inch guns to a 15- and 16-inch gunfight. I do kind of like the Italian Francesco Caracciolo, although it's definitely not great, but I do like it. Okay, the Leningrad, the Russian premium tier 7 destroyer. That is pretty good, but I'd still rather be in a Fiji. Fiji's eat Leningrads for breakfast with a spot of Earl Grey breakfast tea. Fiji has 12 152mm guns, and yes, in common with other British cruisers it does not get high explosive shells, but in common with other British cruisers it doesn't need them. Improved penetration angles on the armour-piercing shells mean that you punish whatever you fire at with these guns. It's a significant upgrade over the Leander at Tier 6, and it doesn't get any better at Tier 8 or 9. The Edinburgh and the Neptune have the same gun configuration, but they're one and two tiers higher, and have significantly worse matchmaking. And with a base 8 second reload, she's also got the fastest rate of fire of any tier 7 cruiser. Her armour is terrible of course, and if you get caught in open water by something with big guns like that Colorado, you can get ended very, very quickly. The delete account was actually very lucky that that didn't happen there and then. He saw the Colorado too late, and he wasn't quite in position to duck into concealment, cover, behind this spit of land here. Which I think is what he was trying to do, and it should work. I mean, it has worked. He can't see the Colorado anymore, but he's being spotted by the Vanguard. But that's okay, because the Fiji has a smokescreen. It's the only Tier 7 cruiser to get one. Well, yeah, okay, the Belfast. But the Belfast doesn't count, it's a premium, and you can't get it any unless you get lucky with a gambling box. Yeah, okay, the Italians get smokescreens, but they're different. They're nowhere near as useful as the Fiji smokescreen, which is a proper smokescreen. It's not just a high-speed, get-out-of-jail-free card, such as the Italians get. I mentioned that her armour was bad. And it is, but it also isn't. I mean, the bow and stern plating is only 13mm, which is absolutely terrible. So, all heavy cruisers and all battleships are going to completely overmatch her nose and her back end. But her belt armour is 114mm thick. That's actually the best belt armour of any tier 7 cruiser, even the heavy cruisers. So she can angle, and providing she doesn't get hit in the nose, she can actually tank 16, hell, even 18 inch armour piercing. That's not something that you necessarily want to put to the test, of course, because if you do get hit in the nose, it will punch right through your citadel. And if you're being fired at from sufficient range, those shells are just going to come crashing down through your weakly armoured deck. But it is something that you can keep in your back pocket, should the situation arise and you've got no other choice. 
She also has, which our delete account is running right now, another essential consumable to back up that smokescreen generator, Hydroacoustic Search. Because as we all know, smoke screens are torpedo magnets. Fortunately, those are mayhem torpedoes, and you could outrun them at a brisk walking pace. But even if you're caught in smoke without your hydro up, and somebody's launched torpedoes at you that are actually capable of outrunning a messenger pigeon, the Fiji has another ace up its sleeve, in common with most of the other British cruisers, fantastic engine performance. The 80,000 horsepower engine that the Fiji comes with, while it doesn't give it a great top speed of just over 32 knots, it does accelerate and decelerate extremely quickly. So if you're caught short and you need to be somewhere else extremely quickly, the Fiji can do it. Oh, I think he thought that the Colorado wasn't going to see him firing over that spit of land there. And he was wrong. <laughs> uh, that was kind of lucky as well. Fortunately, it looks like the Colorado's front two turrets were the only ones that were able to fire. Yeah. Yeah, he's gone undetected now. You see how difficult it can be to judge. He can fire over that without being spotted, but just a couple of hundred metres to the rear and he couldn't. But, well, the Fiji's astonishingly good engine performance to the rescue. I've actually seen these ships, and the Edinburgh, Neptune and Minotaur are the same. In a full hard rudder turn, increasing speed, a kind of manoeuvre that normally in other ships bleeds your speed off like nobody's business, but in these British cruisers they actually accelerate while hard manoeuvring. Whoa, that was a nasty lag spike. It's got a bit of a potato internet connection there, mate. What he's doing now is a bit of a risky move. I don't mean that he's at any risk from the Colorado. The Colorado's guns are all pointing the other way and he's on low health, so this is going to be a relatively easy kill, but he's way out on the flank here. And... Are well, the Colorado's secondaries firing? They are. Colorado's secondaries have a 5.6 kilometer range. Those secondaries started firing at 5.7 kilometers when he came into line of sight around the side of the island. So that's either a secondary build Colorado, if such things exist, or it was just... it was just latency. It might have just been latency. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. The Colorado did manage to clip him in the nose there, something that I think if my delete account hadn't wasted time with the torpedoes and just focused on using the guns, he would have been dead before he got the chance to do it. But, well, it's easy to backseat game. Hell, I spend my entire life backseat gaming. That's what this channel's all about. Uh, but at the end of the day, the Colorado's dead, and my delete account isn't. But yes, the danger that I was talking about wasn't that I delete account was likely to be sunk by the Colorado. I mean, the chances of that happening were fairly slim. Oh, hang on a second, he could be in trouble with the Strasbourg. He's trying to get into cover behind the island. Oh, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. The Strasbourg's firing high explosive. Oh, and another nasty lag spike. But yes, the danger, I will eventually make this point that I was talking about wasn't that he was in any kind of extreme danger from the Colorado, but taking this extreme flanking position in order to get the drop on the Colorado has left him right out on the flank. And that can usually mean that you're completely out of position to have any further impact on the rest of the battle for at least the next few minutes. However, well look at the rest of his team. He's not that much further behind them. Trying to finish that Strasbourg off. And he might get him. Wait. Another lag spike. Everything froze up there and you didn't actually see the damage, but this should get him. Is it just me? Or did the notification that he'd sunk the Strasbourg pop up a fraction of a second before he actually sank the Strasbourg? <laughs> oh well, never mind. Oh, a Bidioni. That's not a bad ship, as Tier 6 cruisers go, but I do have one question to ask of that Bajoni captain. What is he doing sailing towards this lot? Okay, there's no longer a West Virginia here, but there is a Fiji, a New Orleans, a Richelieu, and an Amagi, and you're in a Tier 6 light cruiser. Has the strain of it all just become too much for you to bear? Can you not take it anymore? Or are you just sick of living? My delete account does make a very dubious firing choice here. He stops to volley a salvo at the Vanguard, who is actually no threat to him at the moment, can't fire. This allows the Bajoni to do some damage 
knock out some torpedo tubes and set a fire. If he'd shot at the Bajoni instead of shooting at the Vanguard, he would have taken no damage at all from that. Admittedly, he didn't take a huge amount of damage, but it did force him to put his damage control on cooldown, which he wouldn't have had to do, and taking some damage is always worse than taking none. I know, I know. Backseat gaming again. It's what I do. Now, where did that Vanguard go? Hmm. He's on the other side of that island. And he's probably expecting, if he has any kind of sense, that this cluster of enemy ships who are behind on points and who are very shortly going to be behind on cap circles with less than 10 minutes of the game to go are going to be rushing straight for cap circle Bravo in the centre of the map in order to make a fight of it. So if I was that vanguard, I would be lurking on the far side of that island waiting to spank the broadside of anybody who pokes his nose out of this cap circle. And that is exactly what he's doing. Now, the Vanguard is only armed with 15-inch guns. But then, what the hell was that? Did you see that? That airstrike from the Indracht. <laughs> that was absolutely terrible. <laughs> well, anyway. The Vanguard is clearly positioning to do exactly that. And the Richelieu is entirely welcome to take his chances, but the Fiji is not. Not with 13mm of bow plating. 15 inch guns will slap you silly right through that. So, I delete the count is going around, while continuing to suffer from the occasional lag spike. Hopefully he's going to be able to uh, finish off the Swamp German over there. Oh my god! Did the full health Richelieu just ram the vanguard? Why would you do that? You're more than a hundred points behind. Why are you trading battleships for battleships? When you're behind on points and caps, you don't want to trade for enemy ships. You want to sink enemy ships without losing any of your own. Why would you go for a ram? What is wrong with these people? I mean... It's not rocket science. This isn't complicated. It's basic arithmetic. Okay. Come on. Finish off the Swamp German. Claw some of those points back. One hit should be all it takes. And he's got him. Nice. That's bought you some breathing time. You're still 100 points behind and one cap down. And the Nelson over there is in desperate need of some help. Hopefully he can hang on against the enemy Richelieu. I mean, he's got bigger guns. Ooh, the Richelieu was looking this way. That's not good. That's not good. Well, actually, hang on. It's a Richelieu. It couldn't hit the side of a bomb from the inside, so it's all good. Hold on, Nelson. Wick. Oh, no, that's not. That is not good. That's the Akatsuki. The Nelson is doomed. That's why the Richelieu had his guns pointing this way. He knew he didn't have to worry about the Nelson. Oh, well. Yep, there go the torpedoes. Good night, sweet prince. It was nice while it lasted. Alright, so it's three on three again. There's a Fuso over there that we don't have to worry about right now, but there's a Rishilulu down there that we definitely do. He's reversing. Looks like he's trying to play for time. But we've got an Amagi coming in. And I'll I'll take the Pepsi challenge with the Amagi against the Rishilu any day of the week. So what's our delete account gonna do here? Because he is in open water, and the Richelieu does only really have to get lucky once against a broadside light cruiser. So, I think he's going to try to sneak the cap. I mean, they know he's here, somebody's flipping the cap. They've lost sight of the Fuso, and he was last spotted heading north, so he could be appearing around the side of that island any second now. Just to cover his bets, our delete account launches his three torpedoes. Yeah, the Fiji gets torpedoes, but they're all oh, hang on, he's spotted. All right, he doesn't want to risk losing his capture progress. Pops the smoke screen, slows down. Fortunately, the Richelieu didn't have the guns loaded and couldn't take advantage of that momentary detection window. And there's the cap circle. So they have two cap circles to the enemy's one, but they are 200 points behind. And there's only five minutes of this game left. Richelieu flies blind into the smoke, gets a lucky hit, but it wasn't lucky enough. And one of my delete accounts torpedoes just hit something. That has to be the Fuso. 
who may very well actually be in line of sight right now, but we won't know because the smoke screen is in the way. Now, as a light cruiser, the Fiji does have a pretty good smoke firing penalty. We have no idea how close that Fuso may be. We need to kill this uh, this Richelieu quick. Keeps looking for the Fuso, but he hasn't been spotted yet. If the Fuso had just appeared around the side of the island, he's close enough now to be seeing and firing from inside smoke. So where did the Fuso go? Oh, they've just lost the New Orleans. That's put the enemy team 300 points ahead, but they are about to clean up the kill. There it is, on the Richelieu, and there's the Kraken Unleashed. So, if you have to trade, at least trade a cruiser for a battleship, because you come off best in the points exchange, and there's the Fuso. What on earth is he doing? He had the perfect opportunity to come around the side of this island and spank the bejesus out of Idolite account. But what looks like happened is he was doing that, ate one torpedo, panicked, turned around, and he's going the other way. Which means for the best part of the last two minutes, that Fuso has done absolutely nothing other than eat a torpedo and then pull a U-turn. He's had no contribution whatsoever to the fight that's been raging on this side of the island. And now... I mean, the Fuso's a good ship, but it's only a tier 6 battleship, and it's only armed with 14-inch guns. And now he has to fight an Amagi on one side, and a Fiji suffering yet more lag spikes on this side. And the Amagi is armed with 16-inch guns, and there's the Confederate award. Torpedoes, away, 8km range, no problem. The Amagi, of course, even though he's taken a couple of torpedoes, I think, from the Akatsuki, who's been forced to launch them from behind, still has a 10,000 hit point advantage over the poor old Fuso. At, wait, no. No. No, what? Why would you do that? Is there some kind of sale on ramming flags at the moment? Just in case there's any doubt whatsoever that the Fuso was the one who initiated that ram? even assuming that that was the best thing that the Fuso could do, which is debatable. But that was all the Amagi. Pay attention to chat. There he is. Lord and a milkshake in the Fuso. And I quote, Yeah, I totally meant to do that. It wasn't him turning inside me. Yep. The Tier 8 just threw his ship away to take out a Tier 6 battleship. Another points neutral exchange, which is exactly what you need when you're 100 points behind and the Akatsuki, who, unlike certain members of these two teams, is actually capable of thinking and breathing at the same time, didn't bother trying to stern chase a 32 knot battleship and try to hit him with torpedoes, and instead has flipped Capture Point Charlie, which has given the enemy team two capture circles, as well as their 150 point lead, and has also put the Akatsuki well out of harm's way of I delete account in the Fiji. The only chance he has now is if the Akatsuki tries to win any harder than he already is. Now, frequent visitors to this channel may expect that that is exactly what is going to happen because I delete account, even though he is continuing to suffer from lag spikes, is spotted. Which can only mean that the enemy destroyer is looking at him and is somewhere within his detection radius of 10.1 kilometers. Unfortunately, for those of you who are expecting the enemy destroyer to throw this match, this video is not called Throw Hard, it's called Good Guy Fiji. And the reason for that is because of what's going on in chat. I delete account just told the Akatsuki, I'm not going to be able to find you. To which the Akatsuki replied, yeah, that's kind of true. And then volunteered to head to Capture Circle Bravo in order to make a fight out of it. What we're actually seeing here is something incredibly rare in online gaming in general, and World of Warships in particular. These guys are both trying to out-good guy each other. <laughs> I delete account simply tells him, nah, don't. You should just win. Our brave Fiji captain isn't going to take the win, he wants to earn it. He pops his Hydro, 
he comes perilously close to actually spotting the Akatsuki, according to chat, who says, whew, that was a close one. I could actually see your deckhands. Unfortunately, for I delete account, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, and World of Warships is neither. But at the very least, it was good to see the last two surviving ships be in such good sports and gentlemen about it all, instead of the usual descent into name-calling, recriminations and generally toxic chat behaviour. So I guess there is some hope for the human race after all. Either way, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.